The menstrual cycle refers to the cyclic changes that occur in the female reproductive system to make pregnancy possible. This cycle consists of two phases, a follicular phase or pre-ovulatory phase and a luteal phase or post-ovulatory phase. In the follicular phase, neuroendocrine cells in the hypothalamus secrete gonadotrophin releasing hormone or GnRH in a pulsatile manner. Gonadotrophin releasing hormone in turn stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. These hormones travel to the ovaries where follicle stimulating hormone as its name implies will stimulate the development of follicles. If we zoom in here into a follicle we can see that they are composed of two layers. The outermost layer consists of TECO cells, while the innermost layer consists of granulosa cells. While the follicles mature, luteinizing hormone acts on the TECO cells to secrete androstenedione. Androstenedione is taken up by granulosa cells and is converted to estrogen by the enzyme CYP19A1 also known as aromatase. Granulosa cells also secrete inhibin B. Therefore, as the follicles mature, they start to produce estrogen and inhibin B. At this stage, estrogen will inhibit LH secretion and drive the proliferation and thickening of the uterus lining, while inhibin B will inhibit FSH secretion. Now, it is important to note here that low levels of estrogen will inhibit luteinizing hormone secretion, while high levels of estrogen will promote luteinizing hormone synthesis. Therefore, as shown in the graph above, during the early follicular phase, there is a steady low concentration of LH due to the inhibitory effect of low levels of estrogen and a decreasing concentration of FSH as the follicles mature and produce estrogen and inhibin B. The decrease in FSH leads to the selection and final maturation of only one dominant follicle. This is driven by the extreme dependency of follicles on follicle stimulating hormone in face of a declining FSH secretion. Usually, only the largest follicle with the most FSH receptors and greatest blood supply will survive. This follicle will continue to secrete increasing amounts of estrogen and inhibin B. Once the dominant follicle causes the circulating estrogen levels to exceed 200 picograms per milliliter for around 50 hours, estrogen starts to produce a positive feedback on the pituitary gonadotrophs, stimulating luteinizing hormone secretion and leading to the mid-cycle LH surge. The LH surge drives meiotic maturation as the follicle was originally stuck in prophase 1, now it completes meiosis 1 and rests at metaphase 2 until it enters in contact with a sperm cell. It also drives ovulation and the differentiation of murogranulosa cells into the corpus luteum, which marks the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. The corpus luteum will produce progesterone, estrogen, and inhibin A, which will negatively feed back into the pituitary gonadotrophs, leading to a decrease in GnRH, FSH, and LH, since there is no need to maintain the development of subsequent follicles at this stage. Therefore, as you can see in the graph, the luteal phase is characterized by high levels of progesterone and estrogen. Here, progesterone prepares the body for pregnancy by thickening and maintaining the endometrial lining. Basal levels of luteinizing hormone are necessary for the maintenance of the corpus luteum. However, with time, the corpus luteum loses its sensitivity to LH and it will degenerate without the presence of human chorionic gonadotrophin 
or HCG, secreted from an implanted embryo. Therefore, if there is no implantation of an egg, the corpus luteum degenerates, leading to a fall in progesterone, estrogen, and inhibin A. Thus, the lining of the uterus sheds and the pituitary gonadotrophs and the neuroendocrine cells of the hypothalamus are disinhibited, allowing for the production of luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone and the initiation of a new cycle.